I recently had the opportunity to talk on the Scylla Report podcast about the time I spent volunteering as a marksman with the Syrian Democratic Forces. If you don't know who Scylla Report are, it's a gun channel website that specialises in weapons in the Middle and Near East. It's run by Miles of TFB TV, and my guess is that if you're watching this and don't know about Scylla, you probably want to. I'll put a link at the end and in the description. Talking about my experiences fighting in Syria on the podcast, I was reminded of something I've been meaning to address. Back in 2017, I provided Ian McCullum at Forgotten Weapons with some information on weapons that the Kurdish snipers used in Syria against ISIS. Again, I'll link at the end and in the description to that video. One of the things that came out in the comments of that video, to my surprise, was the interest in the camouflage I applied to my weapons, particularly on the AKM I use as my personal defence weapon. I describe it as dazzle camouflage. Well, that is an incorrect term, though the original naval dazzle schemes of World War I were the inspiration. So I thought it might be of use to those with an interest in warfare and techniques to explain my thinking behind the application of this pattern, how it was achieved, and how useful it was in reality. Anyone watching this probably understands the fundamentals of camouflage, to break up an outline and so make it harder to recognise what an object is. This is generally achieved by use of different colours and patterns. An example of this is how I disguised my SVD Dragunov rifle that was my primary arm in Syria, by winding strips of MTP, also known as multicam, cloth around the barrel, foregrip and scope, the outline of the rifle is broken up and serves as effective camouflage at a distance. Perfect for what I was using the rifle for. Note that I tried several prior schemes to the Dragunov, normally with the favoured bushy effect. This made for an effective breaking of the rifle's silhouette, but the loose strands tended to blow around in front of the scope while shooting, causing distraction. I found the best compromise was the tightly wound cloth, which achieved largely the same effect and did not impede vision. With the AKM, I decided to try something different. This gun was my secondary weapon, for use at night, mainly when the SVD was ineffective. In short, if you were in a forward position at night, and ISIS launched an assault, you wanted the Kalashnikov, not the Dragunov. The effect was achieved by applying several layers of surgical tape to the areas to be covered. Then it was a case of pouring a little water on the ground of wherever you were to form a dry and mud paste. Too wet and the water would wick through the tape and cause rust. It just needed to be damp enough to rub in. And hey presto, you have a colour that matches the local environment pretty much exactly once dry. Apply it to the tape and you have your basic camouflage. However, the AK is an utterly distinctive shape and look. Even in a dark night, you can tell the silhouette of the weapon in someone's hands. Therefore, I decided to try something a little more radical in the disguise I applied. The key to this was to break up the silhouette even more violently. The theory was that the radical difference in the light given off by the different colours would make it extremely hard to make out the shape of the weapon. This is an important consideration when you are advancing in the dark and possibly being observed. The longer you can confuse an enemy as to who you are and what you are doing, the better. This camouflage I applied especially on distinctive features such as the magazine. Simply covering as much of the rifle and its components as possible doesn't work. In the dark, a tan AK looks exactly like a black AK. This pattern of very light tan against black metal was extremely effective. Although a number of my colleagues made disparaging remarks about the look, in the night time the weapon was very hard to make out. This was graphically demonstrated when I attended a Kurdish New Year party. The Kurds celebrate by blowing through a massive tracer. Uh, I have a video on that elsewhere on my channel. Needless to say, this happens at night and is followed up by a party. As a result, all weapons are stacked against a convenient out-of-the-way wall. Afterwards, despite knowing exactly where I'd left my rifle, I had real problems finding it. All the other Kalashnikovs could be made out in the darkness, but mine was essentially invisible. I guess that if I had trouble picking it out in the dark from a distance of about 5 foot, any ISIS fighter would have even more problems picking it out. That wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in military history and affairs, feel free to check out my website, militarymatters.online. I'll put a link in the description. Also, have a look at some of the other videos I've produced. You may find something else of interest. Check out some of the links coming up.